Hey guys, Brian from Abby Carrot Dolls here, and basically right now we're in the middle of the hatching season. It's completely bordello everywhere. We have uh, hundreds and hundreds of snakes that I've already hatched, and we have probably a hundreds to thousands more to be to be hatched. So today what I'm gonna do is I just wanna go through a few videos that we're gonna be doing in the next few weeks about like the process of what we do when we hatch out snakes. We're gonna go, we're gonna dive into colubrids today. We're gonna go through a few clutches. We're just gonna look at what we hatch out and put them away until they're ready to shed out. So we're gonna get right into it right now. So first off, we have some beautiful milk snakes. Now, what I do normally is, since they can get very, very agitated, I will just put them in this little bin right here. Probably not the right bin right now. Oh, wow. Huh? So hey guys, so you're gonna have to brace with me right now. So this is what we're dealing with. Our right, well, hey, look at this. See, little baby Nelson milk snakes. They're all biting me right now. They're a little bit everywhere. So what I'm gonna do is that, as much as I would like to showcase them to you guys, oh my God. <laughs> this is the reality about working with milk snakes. So you wanna work with milk snakes, you gotta be not stressed, very patient, because they are, tend to be a little bit skittish as babies. So we have some Nelson milk snake that are actually head for splotched. And oh my lord. So, there we go, come here you. So, woo, what a start. So, oh my god, look at them guys. See? So when we talk about raw footage and Video is basically not going as planned. This is definitely the definition of it right now. But this is what we deal with on a oh my. on a daily. Oh. <laughs> Woo! Here we go. Oh, here he's not letting go. Come on, little guy. Okay, so Nelson milk snakes. That was basically hatched. We actually keep, most of the time we keep two clutches together. So there's only one clutch that was hatched out right here. So what I do is I just put the number of the clutch on the bin. The snakes are here with water and in moss. We're just gonna wait until they shit out. Once they shit out, we put them individually in containers and we do that. So now we got some king snakes. King snakes are not as bad as milk snakes. So I will show you what we have here. So we have some amazing lavender and lavender aberrant California king snakes. I just love on how they are, like the purple on them is so beautiful. Now in lavender cal kings, there's actually two different types of lavenders. There's one that they call the burgundy lavender, which is a darker burgundy, a darker purple. You can actually see a few of them that are much darker. And then you have this lighter one right here. That's a lavender. So sometimes there's like two different lines to them. Now I see, I can spot right now here, we have one deformed baby. So this is very unfortunate. Uh, these things happen. I mean, not all animals come out perfectly. Uh, in those cases, usually, well, we do deal with king snakes. So um, they're gonna be probably used to feed some other bigger king snakes. Now we have, actually we have two that are deformed. Now. Deformities, usually, for me, I consider this genetics. So, like, genetics from, from the lineage. So I know that if I get some deformed babies for next year, I must breed them out. So I gotta make sure that I don't do the same, the same pairing, just to make sure that my gene pool is strong. That's definitely the most important thing. So when we have, when we do have produced king babies, that's the first thing that we note not to do from here. Now here we have a few scaleless corns. Now this is fun because this is actually a scaleless to scaleless breeding. So we have just a few scaleless. And as we can see, we can hatch out a very nice success rate of 100% scaleless corn snakes. So these are all OGT corns and some tesseras as well. So we have the tessera right here and then some very nice OGT. There we go. So this bin was definitely not accurate. A little bit short, I would assume. 
I do have a clutch that we have that is much bigger. So I'm probably gonna get another bin or I will leave Kat to tell me if she wants me to deal with chaos. What do you think? Chaos? Chaos. Yeah. So chaos it will be, which we have some really, really amazing colubrids as well coming out. So this is just what we're doing. We're going through three. We actually have probably um, a dozen more to go today for today. So here we have some more. Now we have some others. These are again Oketis as well. We have some mo some Motleys here. This is a Tessera, um, probably a Tessera Motley where you don't see any pattern. So this is very cool. Um, we do record all the pairings and then I only really go through all the pairings when I when they shit out and I put them individually because at that moment I have to make sure that I identify them which is its own it's its own difficult uh, task you know so this is a little bit of everything that we have yeah that one right there is definitely the highlight of that clutch so this would be a Tessera Motley guys away so it was pretty pretty good clutch we had probably around there was actually two different clutches in here and we have about 20 babies which is pretty good our normal average that I calculate is about 10 babies per pairing, per clutch basically. So when we when we estimate and count whatever we do, a lot of people will always count the amount of eggs that they produce. But I never want to count the amount of eggs because the, at the end of the result, it's always about how many babies you hatch up and actually how many babies you end up selling, especially when you're a, a little bit of a business like us. You know? So this is it, and then the main event for today, we have some really, really amazing hard things here. So we have some scaleless blood pite sides, which are simply stunning. And the other clutch that we have in here are actually from our candy cane uh, sun kiss that we have. So the beautiful line that we've already showcased in a, a few of other videos. So our candy canes are really cool, but what we did this year is we wanted to put the candy canes with some scaleless. So we made some, we bred the, the candy cane sun kiss with a amber scaleless. So we should produce some, we actually, I see that we have some butters. So those would be like butter het sun kiss scaleless, which are really good. I mean, look at all the beautiful colors right here. So we'll take a small advantage before they all go crazy. So we have the scaleless right now that we have are all the blood pite sides. So we have here, for example, this is a nice one. You can see the red on the side. There's not a lot of white, but the white will definitely come up as it grows. So this is a scaleless blood pite side, just very bright, very red, very beautiful. So we have like one, there's another one here. There's a lot more white on this one. See that we do have a few of these, so these are really cool. And these actually come from my original scaleless blood pite side, which is like really white and really clean as a female. One of my favorite scales. So this one really orange, very, very beautiful. And then here you can see actually there's a few of the bloods. I can almost like separate the whole clutch just from the babies that hatch out. We try to not put the same um, types of outcome babies like together when we place the clutches, but it does happen. So these are just bloods. Um, bloods are, are also known as diffused. So bloods are also known as diffused, but what we say is that Every blood is a diffuse, but not every diffuse is a blood. So blood are like, old, we call them like old school bloods. So they're a very deep red coloration to them, which is just really amazing. So now this candy cane, we can see that they're not as nice as what they, as what they were, like as the, as the parents, but we have some albino 
We have some butters. There's actually a caramel here. Then more butter, another albino, and this is a regular. So there's four different morphs all here. And these are all Het Sunkiss Skelis. And um, they're actually Het Hypos as well. So these are gonna be really cool projects to see for the future. So I'm really excited. Come on guys. So one little guy got away, but it's okay. We found him here, so here we go. No, no, no. Don't do this, don't do this, here we go. Here we go. So I did bust the sweat. We actually have here, look at this one. We have a little baby that is hatching out right here. So we're just gonna leave him be and see how this one comes out. So there's, that's one, that's actually, it just reminds me of to say one thing, is that when you hatch out like from scaleless, some scales and some head scales corns, it's really weird because you always have the head scales that hatch out first and then all the scales corns hatch out at the end. Like it's literally all your heads will hatch out and then the scales will hatch out afterwards. So they're definitely a slower process animal, which is actually very interesting and good to know because even when it comes to breeding, it does showcase to that point. So guys, thank you very much for being patient with this madness, but this is actually the reality of our life right now. It is literal madness. So if you like videos like this, comment down below. Let us know what else you want to see. If you want to see some more corn snakes, some king snakes, milk snakes, maybe specified, uh, like species or some more ball pythons or some other stuff that we do but until then thanks for watching no stress and gotta get back to business